Good morning. Now, miscellaneous exercise, second part, 10th sum. Find the expected value, variance, and standard deviation of the random variable whose probability mass functions are given below. Uh, we'll be doing third part only. Uh, what are the values of x? 1, 2, 3, up to n. All these are equally likely uh, events. So, probability of each is 1 upon n. So, make the table. First column headed by x, second p of x, third x into p of x, and finally x square into p of x. So these are the values. Right. Now after this, what is e of x? Sigma x into p of x. So it is 1 upon n plus 2 upon n up to n upon n. Take 1 upon n common. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n. This is sum of the first n natural numbers, n into n plus 1 upon 2. So n gets cancelled. What remains is n plus 1 upon 2. What is e of x square? Sigma x square px. Here, take 1 by n common. To get 1, that is 1 square, plus 2 square, plus 3 square, up to n square. This is sum of the squares of first n natural numbers, n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 upon 6 n gets cancelled. So e of x square uh, comes out to be n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 upon 6. Now what is variance v of x? It is e of x square minus square of expected value that is e of x. Substitute. Simplify this. Now n plus 1 upon 2 can be taken common. So in bracket 2n plus 1 upon 3 minus n plus 1 upon 2, LCM is 6, numerator 4n plus 2 minus 3n minus 3, that is just n plus 1 upon 6, uh, rather n minus 1 upon 6, this part, into n plus 1 by 2. So what is variance? It is v of x equal to n square minus 1 upon 12. Standard deviation is positive square root of variance. So root n square minus 1 upon 12. You can remember this as standard result for CET. Uh, we have done only third part. Uh, these are the answers for remaining first, second, and fourth. Uh, three values for each because we are asked to find expected value, then variance, and standard deviation. Uh, you are supposed to use log tables to find the square root. Square root of 0.56 is 0 0.7483 and so on. Sum number 11. Uh, this is an important sum. A player tosses two coins. He wins rupees 10 if two heads appear, rupees 5 if one head appears, and rupees 2 if no head appears. Find the expected winning amount and the variance of winning amount. Now, when two coins are tossed or a coin is tossed twice, same thing, the sample space consists of these four sample points. Let x denote the amount uh, that person wins. Then x takes values 10, pi and 2, right? So can you tell me what is uh, P of x equal to 10? This is an interesting sum. P of x equal to 10 is nothing but probability of two heads. They have clearly mentioned that. Now, only one sample point out of four is in favor. So P of x equal to 10 is what? 1 by 4. P of x equal to phi is probability of one head. So two are in favor, two sample points are in favor, h, t, t, h. And P of x equal to two, probability of not a single head that is both tails one out of four is in favor so one by four right now construct the table to find mean and variance of x now this is the table so sigma px has to be one 
सिग्मा एक्स इंटू पी एक्स इज फाइव पॉइंट फाइव सिग्मा एक्स स्क्वेर पी एक्स इज थर्टी एट पॉइंट फाइव सो वट इज एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू यू ऑफ एक्स इट इज सिग्मा एक्स पी एक्स दट इज फाइव पॉइंट फाइव वट इज वेरियंस एक्स यू ऑफ एक्स स्क्वेर माइनस स्क्वेर ऑफ यू ऑफ एक्स सब्सिट्यूट टू गेट एट पॉइंट टू फाइव सो एक्सपेक्टेड विनिंग अमाउंट रुपीज फाइव पॉइंट फाइव एंड वी ऑफ एक्स इज एट पॉइंट टू फाइव Actually, thirteenth is similar to question number seven of exercise seven point two. Uh, so for homework, answers are given. Sum number twelve. Let the probability mass function of a random variable x be p of x equal to three minus x upon ten for x equal to minus one zero one two and equal to zero otherwise. Calculate expected gain and variance. Now this is p of x for x equal to minus one zero one two. So when x is minus one, three minus minus one that is three plus one four upon ten. Then when x equal to zero three upon ten. When x is one two upon ten p of x, and when x is two p of x is one upon ten. Okay. Next column x into p of x. These are the values. And last one is x square into p of x. Now, what is sigma x p x zero? What is sigma x square p x? It comes out to be one. Please check the values. Now, what is ask? Expected value that is mean. Expected value is nothing but sigma x p x. So it comes out to be zero. And what is formula for variance x? It is uh, e of x square minus square of e of x. So this is one minus zero square. So it is one. So what are the answers? Expected value equal to zero, and variance is nothing but one. Sum number fourteen. The probability density function of a continuous random variable x is given by f of x equal to <clears throat> one upon two a zero less than x less than two a a greater than zero and f of x equal to zero otherwise. Show that p of x less than a by two is same as p of x greater than three a by two. Okay. Now it is p of x less than a by two. By that we mean integral minus infinity to a by two f x dx. Split this as minus infinity to zero plus zero to a by two. Now for this, what is f of x zero? So zero plus. Now for this, what is f of x one upon two a, which is constant. What is integral dx x upper limit a by two lower limit zero? So one upon two a into a by two. That is one upon four. Now find out second part. So what is p of x greater than three a by two? It is integral three a upon two to infinity f x dx, which is three a upon two to two a plus two a to infinity. For this function is one upon two a. For this this is zero. So one upon two a integral dx is x three a upon two to two a. Now two a minus three a upon two is just a by two into one upon two a is one by four. Now, from one and two, it is clear that p of x less than a by two is the same as p of x greater than three a by two. Now, uh, this is the last sum. Of course, after this, we'll be discussing uh, two sums which are not given in the textbook, but are important. Fifteenth, the PDF of a random variable x is given by f of x equal to k upon root x for zero less than x less than four and equal to zero otherwise. Determine k. Determine CDF of x and hence find p of x less than or equal to two, p of x less than or equal to one. Solution. Now f is PDF, so integral minus infinity to infinity f x dx is one. Now we split this as minus infinity to zero. Plus zero to four, plus four to infinity. Why? 
because for 0 to 4, fx is given to be 4, uh, k upon root x. Otherwise, it is 0. That is why. Now, fx for this is 1 upon root x means x raised to rather k upon root x. Now, what is 1 upon root x? x raised to minus half. Its integral is x raised to minus half plus 1. That is x raised to half upon half and so on. Upper limit 4, lower limit 0. So, it comes out to be 2k into 2 minus 0, but it is 1. So, that gives me k as 1 upon 4. Suppose f of x is cdf. What is formula? Minus infinity to x fx dx. That is minus infinity to 0 plus 0 to x fx dx. Substitute. Simplify. Now k is 1 by 4. So cdf function comes out to be root x upon 2. Now p of x less than or equal to 2. Remember, this is cumulative. So it is up to x equal to 2 means f of 2. So replace every x by 2. So root 2 upon 2 that is 1 by root 2. What is p of x less than or equal to 1? This is up to 1. So probabilities are added till x is 1. Right? So f of 1 capital F that is root 1 upon 2 that is 1 upon 2. So what are the answers? k 1 by 4 p of x less than or equal to 2 is 1 upon root 2 and p of x less than or equal to 1 is 1 upon 2. Uh, now this is an important sum. Uh, this was included in, uh, in, the, in the topic uh, in old syllabus. The PMF of a random variable x is as follows. We are asked to find k p of x less than 1 P of 0 less than x less than 3. We are asked to obtain cumulative distribution function capital F of x and after that we are asked to sketch the graph. Now this is PMF. So sigma p equal to 1 add all the probabilities. So we get this equation. Now this is a cubic equation. First root is obtained by observation. For k equal to 1 LHS same as RHS. So k minus 1 is one factor. Other factors are obtained by performing synthetic division. In that, we write this polynomial in coefficient form 3, minus 10, 9, minus 2. Poly is 0 at k equal to 1. So we write 1 here. This 3 as it is. 3 into 1, 3. Their addition minus 7 into 1, minus 7. Their addition 2 into 1, 2. Addition is 0. Now, this is correct because when we say it is a factor means it divides this with zero remainder. So which is the other factor? 3k square minus 7k plus 2, which can be factorized as k minus 2, 3k minus 1. So possible values of k as per, uh, as per this equation are 1, 2, 1 by 3. But if k is 1, p of x equal to 1 comes out to be negative, which is absurd. So k cannot be 1. If you take k equal to 2, again p of x equal to 1 comes out to be negative. So we have to discard this value also. Now you will notice that for k equal to 1 upon 3, all the probabilities lie within a possible range. So for k equal to 1 upon 3, p of x equal to 0 is 1 upon 9. p of x equal to 1 is 2 upon 9. And p of x equal to 2 is 2 upon 3. Now, this is probability distribution function. Now, how to find cumulative distribution function? Cumulative means probabilities are added. So, 1 by 9, then 1 by 9, plus 2 by 9. Right? And then 1 by 9, plus 2 by 9, plus 2 by 9. Or before that, uh, what is asked? P of x less than 1. That is P of 0, which is 1 by 9. And then p of 0 less than x less than 3 means p of 1 plus p of 2. So comes out to be 8 by 9. Okay, uh, now this is second part actually. By the definition of CDF, what is f of x? It is p of capital X less than or equal to small x. So f of 0 is 1 by 9. f of 1 add first and second probabilities 3 by 9. f of 2 add all the probabilities how to check whether this is correct or not? 
sum of all probabilities has to be one. So this is CDA. For drawing the graph of CDA, let us take the values of x along x-axis and values of fx along y-axis. Now the scale selected on x-axis one centimeter equal to one unit. On y-axis one centimeter equal to one upon nine unit. So for x equal to zero, f of x is one by nine. For x equal to one, f of x is three by nine. See the graph. So up to one, why hollow circle here? Because when x is one, f of x is not one by nine. It is three by nine. So dark circle here. Why hollow circle here? Because when x is two, f of x is not three by nine. It is one. That is nine by nine. Okay. Now for other values of x, that uh, PMF is defined as f of x equal to zero only. So once the total is one. It remains one only. So this is the graph of CDF. Now the last one. Find the expected value, variance, and standard deviation of the random variable whose PMF is given below, where zero less than p less than one, and what is q? Probability of failure. It is one minus probability of success. So we construct the following table to find expected value, variance, and standard deviation. First column x, then p x, x p x, and finally x square into p x. Now, from the table, these are the values. So you have to be uh, very careful. Uh, this comes out to be sigma x square. I mean. Um, Is it sigma x square? No, this should be sigma x into p x, not x square. So take three p common to get this. Note that this is square of p plus q. Now probability of success plus probability of failure is one. So this is just three p. I repeat, this is wrong. This is basically sigma x i into p x i, not sigma x i square. So three p. And what is sigma x square p of x? Add this. So same logic. Take three p q common from these terms to get q plus p, which is one. Take nine p square common to get again p plus q, which is one. So sigma x square p x comes out to be three p q plus nine p square. So what is the expected value e of x? Sigma x p x that is three p. And variance is substitute the values. Simplify to get three p q. Now what is standard deviation? It is positive square root of variance. So root three p q. This is an important sum. So that's it for today. We have completed this topic. In the next lecture, we'll start with binomial distribution.